Hi, Holly Browning here, back with Family Research Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to be talking about vital records, and the word vital comes from the Latin word vita, meaning life. So we're talking about major moments in a person's life, such as birth, death, marriage, and even divorce records. Um, and I'm referencing U.S. records only. Um, a really helpful research tip is to actually start backwards in your research. So starting at the last point in a moment's life or a person's life, which would be death records. Um, there's actually quite a lot of information that you can get on a death certificate, especially ones from the um, later, more modern years. Uh, you can get a lot of birth information, um, mother and, who the mother and father were, uh, that kind of thing. So I have a, a death record here pulled up, and for, the, for most of the time, for looking for any kind of vital records, they're usually based on the county level. Now, not all the time. A lot of the older ones are, are you know, federal, um, but most of the time you have to know maybe the county where they had passed or where they were born. So let's see here. Birth certificates were not actually even mandated until after 1908. So most of the US uh, between 1908 and 1920, um, it's, it's basically when it started to go into effect. Most births were recorded on the county level, which I will show you, um, but actual certificates um, were not really, really prevalent until between 1910 and 1920. Um, so before the digital days, uh, you had to go actually to the county courthouse, that you, the county that you were researching, so you had to travel there, and you also had to pay a, a fee to get a copy. So uh, that's, you can still definitely do that, but before you decide to do that, I would check a couple of sites to make sure that it's not on there for free. Then you, you don't have to pay any money, you don't have to do any unnecessary traveling unless you want to. Um, and I have um, two that you can search that are usually really, really good um, with free records. And one is familysearch.org, and the other is the National Center for Statistics. Now, a lot of records, of course, are also available on the pay sites, the standard Ancestry, MyHeritage. Um, there's a lot more out there that I don't even know the names of. But for a fee, again, um, you, you can look at all their records. So the death certificate that I have pulled up on the screen here, obviously at the top it's going to tell you the state, okay? This is, has Commonwealth of Kentucky. And right here it'll say the place of death, and it usually has county. So this was the county, and it says city or town, and sometimes it'll say, um, you know, the city, or in here it has rural in parentheses, so they, you know that they lived outside of the city limits. It has the name, um, the date of death, the date of birth, the birthplace, um, occupation, um, and down below here, it gives you, let's see here, the cause of death. And on here, as you see, it says, it, they're, they're hard to read sometimes, but you can make out bronchial pneumonia. And then at the bottom, let's see here, it usually will give informants, um, and then the undertaker's signature, and um, sometimes it'll give the cemetery where they were buried, um, and, and that sort of thing. So there is a lot of information to gleam off a death record, and I think that's why that they, they have you do that record first. So you will see a lot about witnesses, and witnesses will come into play a lot more with marriage records, which I will be showing you. So let's see, so switching focus then, I have a marriage record pulled up from 1871. And what's neat about this is, on this I actually have the marriage bond, and at the bottom there is the marriage certificate, which they are a little bit different. So let's see, so the marriage records are usually recorded on the bride's county. So it's usually the bride's county of, of birth, of residence. And on the marriage bond or marriage records, you're going to have words like um, a surety. And a surety is not really the same thing as a witness because as you know, on any marriage record, you always have someone um, that's a witness, that has witnessed and stood in and uh, knows both person's character and you know, stands as a witness. A surety, that was more, um, Let's see, a surety was more of a person that could stand in 
in the bond. The bond was an amount of money that the groom would have to pay if the marriage was fraudulent or they, you know, they weren't, they, he had another wife. It was something of that nature. So if that person was lying, the surety could step up and he would actually have to pay. So if that person didn't pay, the surety stood up and said, okay, I will pay in his place. So it was a little bit different and I got uh, confused on that. So surety and witness isn't quite the same thing, but each, each would know the other person. Okay, so the marriage bond, a lot of the times it would be signed within days of the wedding, okay? So here you have the bride and groom's name, you have where they are getting married, and then you have all the information here uh, on the mail, and it says age of groom, um, and it says, like, it actually says, let's see, number of marriage of groom, number of marriage of bride, so you know if that's a first marriage or a second marriage, and that's really helpful. And if we look on the bottom here, down at the bottom we see the actual marriage certificate. So this marriage certificate means the marriage actually took place. So a lot of the times what can be confusing is you can find a marriage bond, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the marriage took place. Um, a lot of the times it was within a couple of days between when you went to the courthouse and got the bond and actually got married. Now when I looked at this certificate, it was actually the same day, which, you know, also occurred. So let's see here. So moving on to birth records. Um, most counties, they, back into the 1790s, would document um, the births in the county. Like I said, birth certificates, actual certificates, were not mandated until after 1908. So I have an actual birth record of a county, okay? And up here you'll see it has births and it has a county here. And this is the original writing of the recorder. So um, you'll, you'll definitely have to look, have to make it a little bigger to make out the names, but it has the date of birth, um, the name of child, the sex, um, if the child was born alive or if it was a stillborn birth, the place of birth and the name of the father and mother. So it has, it definitely has a lot of information, but it's just not an actual certificate. So to find what I was looking for, I had to go to the bottom here and I found my name. Let's see, let's make it a little bit bigger. Show you how hard it is to actually see. Let's see, I was looking for a Silas Smith. So it's here. Silas G. Smith, male, and then the county, and then the father's name. So you just have to do a little bit of searching there. Um, and also there were, uh, there were delayed births. So a lot of the births weren't recorded right when they happened. And that's due to the fact that most children in rural areas or, or even farther back in time were not delivered by actual MDs or doctors. They were delivered by a community midwife and when the doctors you know came around to record these births it would have been could have been six months to a year later so there were a lot of delayed births um, let's see a couple of things if you still can't find dates you can look at other records to approximate dates so let's say a child was born or a child was not in an 1860 census but he appeared on the 1870 census and he was five years old well, we can obviously kind of make an approximate guess that that child would, would have been born in 1865 and things like that that you can use to best approximate your answer. Also, you need to be, um, be mindful of county border changes. A lot of the times you will put in the county that you think the person was from or where they resided, and it turns out that that county, um, you know, be, broke off and became a new county or it was absorbed into another bigger county. That happened quite a bit. So there are maps that you can um, look at uh, if you go to a county's website and, and kind of look at the years and when the kind of the border changed. So those are just um, some helpful tips and tricks on vital records. Um, there are probably behind census records, um, the most important records you know, that you can find. 
so that's all I have for you this episode. Um, stay tuned for next episode. We're going to talk about some kind of unknown um, minor records that you wouldn't think to look for that could be really crucial in your search. So I will see you again in two weeks. Thanks for watching.